Lexi Walker, singer, songwriter, actress, YouTube sensation, thank you wow. so much <laughs> for being part of Three Questions. Oh, thanks for having me. It has been several years since you have been with us on Three Questions. Tell us, what have you been doing in the meantime? You've been growing up, we can see that. <laughs> what else have you been doing? Uh, I just, I've just been having a blast, you know? I think everyone, Everyone has a unique journey that they go through, especially through the teens and everything like that, and I'm no exception. I've had some pretty great experiences performing and traveling abroad, you know, <laughs> in Asia or being in Europe. It's just, it's been really amazing, and, and I've been kind of exploring other areas of entertainment, like theater. I'd never really acted before, and I did a couple productions there, and I've just been continuing to grow musically. And where, now, in Europe you did a couple productions, or where? Oh, oh, so the theater productions I did, I did actually here. I did Dorothy uh, in Wizard of Oz That's at Hale right. Theater. That's right. That was so much fun. It was such a beautiful production. It was like, it was like one big firecracker. It was, it was so creative and, and just beautiful beautiful and colorful like they did such an amazing job and it's a classic story so it was just a blast for me to be able to do that and then after that I, I went into something a little different it's a Broadway bound original production that's still in development that they debuted at the Norda Center at, at UVU um, and I got to play Malia a 14 year old girl and it was really cool because I could kind of collaborate with the writers as we were rehearsing and even performing the show. And, so. and what show was that? Fly More Than You Fall. Fly More Than You Fall. Yeah. Now, I, I remember seeing on your website some promotional pictures for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and how big, how big a deal is Fly More Than You Fall, which is headed for Broadway? <laughs> yeah. They, and I, you're starring in it. I, oh, I think it's a, I think it was a, I mean, for me, definitely, it's a pretty big deal. I mean, it's it's super cool. I mean, typically, a production, when it's making its way to Broadway, it can take eight or nine years or even more. But it seems to be on this fast track, this accelerated course, where it's only been three years in development, and there's already so much buzz around it and, you know, people wanting it to be on Broadway. I actually got to do an industry reading of the play where you just you have a cast that sits there and reads through it and acts through it but doesn't really have, like, blocking or anything like that for uh, a lot of top people in the industry who are, you know, doing, involved in projects like Dear Evan Hansen and Alexander or Hamilton <laughs> yeah. and just all these cool productions. I, I thought that was amazing, too, because I love Laura Osnes. She's this, this Broadway star, and I saw her in Cinderella, and she happened to be at the reading in the front row, and I was, I was so nervous. Oh I was like, my. oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, it did was you great. get to talk to her? What did yeah. she well, what did yeah. she say to you? So I, it was embarrassing actually <laughs> because I I spoke to her and I don't know, it was just word vomit just came out. I felt so bad. She was like, hi, like, hi, like, what, what's your name? And I said, hi, my name is Lexi Walker. I'm playing Malia, a 14-year-old girl whose mother deals with cancer. And, and, and I told her the whole story of the play in one breath. I was like, hi, nice to meet you. I love you. And my favorite color is green. And, and I love to sing. Bye. Can I go home with you, please? <laughs> Can I go home with you? I love you. Bye. <laughs> it was so you know, Well, do you remember anything she said to you? Oh, I think I did most of the time. <laughs> so, uh, maybe I get to meet her again sometime and amend that. I mean, Laura Osnes, wow. I love you. J just recently, we had Kristen Chenoweth as a guest Ooh, here on really? Three Questions. And oh. I understand that she's another one of your favorites. Oh, did, you yes. sh shared the stage with her, did you I not? did, yeah. What, what did she teach you about singing? And what did she teach you about show business? Ooh, well... I, don't, I, I grew up my entire life listening to her, mm -hmm. especially on the Wicked soundtrack and, and then her other songs that she would release. I tried to copy her exactly singing 14G because I thought that was the coolest song. Uh, and I saw her, I saw her perform uh, several times before I actually got to share the stage with her. Wow. And so when I, when I spoke with her before we went on stage, I remember something that really stands out in my mind. I, I told her, I was like, Wow, you're you're actually taller than I thought you were, right? And, I, and, I, and she's not I'm tall. Not, I'm, neither she, am I, yeah. right? And but she was a little bit taller than me. And I was like, wow, you're you're taller than I thought you were. And she's like, oh, honey, no, and kicked off her heels <laughs> and just went. Whoo! And I was like, oh, 
<laughs> great. <laughs> I mean, the, she was so calm beforehand, and she just said, oh, honey, keep doing what you're doing. And she was so, so collected and, and put together. It just, it gave me this inspiration like where oh my gosh I can be like that I can I can before a show have that be my everyday be my normal and I don't have to get so worked up and so nervous about it so it showed me that someone can really make a career out of this and and be happy and make friends backstage and where your normal is on stage and you don't have to be very tall to do it and you don't have to be very tall to do it she is fabulous <laughs> yeah yeah now you have uh, been singing since you were what five years old is that right well you know you'll get different answers from different people but I think my grandmother would say two years old two years because old. she's a very musical woman and unfortunately none of her kids shared that same passion, I don't oh, think. Dear. And she was just looking with her grandkids, like who's gonna be the musical one? And when I was two years old, I was rocking this little mechanical teddy bear that sang uh, a Beatles song. What was it? I can't remember. Oh, it was I Will by the Beatles. I will. Oh. Who knows how long I've loved you. Yeah, and so I would I would sing along to it and I couldn't remember all the words, but I would just be da 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 and just kind of singing and humming along and I was two and, sh and she looked at me and she said that's it like she's gonna she's she gonna identified singer. that you could sing already yep yeah. and so if I visited my grandparents in California she would always give me a little voice lesson so but you have been performing since you were what five on stage correct oh I don't know when did I, you start on stage I um I, I consider my official, you know, kind of foray into, into the solo performance world was when I was 11, and I 11. sang an anthem. Okay. Uh, but beforehand, I think I did, I did some dance groups and stuff like that. Okay. But your singing career started to take off when you were 11 years old. It's when you first yeah. performed in public like yeah. that, right? Yeah. From that time till now, tell us about the ritual that you go through before you perform. Mm. I mean, are you nervous? Are you mm. anxious? Are you relaxed? Tell us what goes through your heart and mind oh. right before a performance. I think it's just the best thing in the world. It's funny. I've, I've had, I think I've experienced that whole range of emotions before a show. There was a point in time where it's, it's I love it and I hate it at the same time because right before a show, it's like, you are locked into this, you are committed to this, you can't run away, you have to do this you show. You can't get out of you this. Have, yeah, <laughs> and so when I was younger and I would be so nervous, I would be like, wow, I can't run away, I can't just not do it, I have to go on stage right now for an hour and a half and entertain people. Wow. And so it's kind of this roller coaster ride, and now I, I love that, I love that feeling of just kind of the, I get ex really exhilarated. The butterflies. Yeah, well, not even butter butterflies, it's like, I just get so excited and so I, I'm just like a horse just like you know a racehorse just like you know bumping against the, the gates just yeah, waiting yeah, for yeah, them yeah. to to bust open so tell, yeah I just I I'm excited <laughs> tell me about the feeling you have when you realize out there on stage that you have the audience in your hands. Those are the they, best. Tell me about that. <laughs> that's, you know, that's, that's what's so cool about performing live. No matter what you do online or no matter how you, you interact or how closely you interact with fans online through comments and, and, and posts and everything like that, there's nothing like a live performance where you're creating moments with people that's special and unique only to them into that time and that place and it will never be the same again. And oh, it's just so cool when you're totally in the music and they're totally in the music and you get to share that experience together and just create feelings that are impossible outside of that space. It's just, it's awesome. Mm. I love it. <laughs> Looks like it's intoxicating. It is intoxicating. And that's, you know, there's been several times, you know, as I'm, as I'm growing up where I had, to re I had to affirm to myself, I'm like, okay, is music what I really want to do? Do I actually want to do this? Because I, I love everything. I love painting. I love dermatology and psychology <laughs> and politics and, and writing. And, and it's, it's difficult to make a decision. But that feeling right there, that moment that you, that you make where you have kind of the audience right there with you in a song, that's what convinced me. I'm like, okay, I like that more than anything else. So this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> mm. Now, you, 
You have talents in many, many different areas. You paint, and oh. you are very intelligent. Just because you paint doesn't mean you're talented in painting. Well, there are those of us who, who paint with crayons. So <laughs> what I'm saying is that you, your, your talents lie in many different areas and in many different directions. If you were not going to follow a music career and develop that, what would you do? What would I do? You know, I have these conversations with my family all the time, <laughs> like on the phone, because, you know, I'll be, I'll be talking about, I get really excited when I get new skincare things. I'm, I'm an addict, I think. I love serums and, and all sorts of stuff. Who knows if it's good or not? But I talk about the individual ingredients with my family members, and they tell me, you should, have you ever thought about being an esthetician? Or have you ever thought about being a dermatologist? And so, I don't know, or, or being a politician or an investigative journalist. That's so hard. I still have a hard time figuring out what kind of stuff I like because yeah. I'm all over the place. But if I had to choose, I think right now, psychology would be psychology. really cool. Psychology. And like, and you know, I don't know, therapy too. Just you know, how, how do you feel about psychology? It's just, it's so interesting being able to <laughs> classify people in a professional way <laughs> is kind of cool. Now, what, you're in college right now. Yeah. At age 17, is that right? Yes. yes. Tell us how you wound up in college at, a, at age 17 and what are you studying Oh, there? it's just this windy road when it comes to education. <laughs> well, I, I, I was going to school and then I started taking online classes because, or I moved online because of my schedule. Right. And then I just thought, oh, I'll just, I'll just finish. It's like, why not just, you know, Keep going. Yeah, accelerate it through online classes. And so uh, I was done with high school early, a year early, and then I just went right into classes. Do you miss high school at all? You know. You'd be a senior right now. <laughs> yeah. I'd, I've never had, like, a regular educational path, I don't think. And so, you know, I was always busy, like, performing or something when my friends wanted to hang out. And so I, I didn't have the typical high school experience at all, like going out every weekend and you know going to the parties or whatever. Uh, I don't know. Football games. I went to dances. Kind of... I went did to... you? Yes, I did. Oh, it was good. that was a lot of fun. But it was at a small private school, <laughs> so it wasn't it wasn't typical. But you have performed all over the United States for a U.S. presidential inaugural ball. You've performed in Asia. You've performed in Europe. You're getting into musical theater now. Um, do you ever ask yourself or contemplate the question of why is all of this happening yeah. to me? Well, yeah, all, <laughs> I think several times a day, every day. And, and what do you come up with? Oh, sometimes I come up empty and other times, you know, I, I do believe that there's more to life than, than what we see. And I think my ultimate purpose is finding what it is I'm best at um, and how to to magnify that in a way that I can share goodness with as many people as possible. And I think my, my favorite thing in the world is just to be able to, as unselfishly as possible, help people in whatever way I can. And I feel like the best way I've been able to do that is through performing and sharing music. You know, I I think everyone has, like, roles that they're... That, they're, that they are drawn towards, whether it's a more like administrative role or a supporting role or something like that. And for me, I think it's kind of being more of a mouthpiece or being a performer. That, that is something that I felt I've always been better at. And so I, I always wonder why you know, certain opportunities come to me. And I think maybe it's because if I do my best and, and give my all with this opportunity, it can, it can do some good in the world. And so that's, that's ultimately all I want to do is to, you know, write songs about my own life experiences and hopefully help someone who just like relates and inspire them to write something or, or to take that, you know, that leap of faith or that action that will better their lives, whatever it is mm. that can help people I want to do. You have done a marvelous job of covering all kinds of songs from Frozen and, and Wicked and all <laughs> over the place. And, and I mean, your angel voice is such a compliment to all of those songs and all of, those, all of that music. 
you have entered a new arena now in that you are writing your yes. own music. Yes. Tell us what made you decide, hey, you know, it's time to start putting my stuff out there. Yeah, it's funny. I always, for some reason, you know, when it comes to creative breakthroughs, I always feel like I have to, I had to realize that I had permission to be able to do something. And so I just thought, oh, I could never write a song. I just, that's not, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I had this mental block or something. Uh -huh. And then I finally realized when someone encourages me, or, it's like, no, I can. I'm allowed to. I can write music and maybe one day be good at it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I just, I felt that at a certain point, you don't want to be singing somebody else's song. It's more fulfilling to write something that's totally, totally conducive to your own experience in life mm -hmm. and, and then share it and have other people relate. It's just, it's another way of communicating. And I think music is just on a higher level. It's universal. People can relate, you know, regardless of language barriers. You have written a song that is starting to take off on YouTube. Oh. Blind Boy. Yeah. Tell us about that. Oh, well, I. Is that from a real life experience? <laughs> I mean, I just gave myself away. I write songs about my, yeah, <laughs> it is, yeah, yeah. Blind Boy's Poor face. kid doesn't even know what he's missing now. <laughs> he's blind. So Blind Boy <laughs> is just about, just, it's a typical unrequited love story, I guess, where, you know, you, you, you drop so many hints to this person and you make it so obvious that you're really into them. And they're just like. blind. Like they've got a <laughs> blindfold over their eyes and they just don't get it. Or maybe, maybe they do when they don't want to acknowledge it. But... Yeah, I, I've been friend zoned many a time, and I think oh. that <laughs> that song was just a way for me to kind of get get those feelings things. out. I yeah. guess it's basically a diary entry that I turned into a song. So. When you're singing your own songs, and and I realize that there is a limited uh, catalog of your own music out there yet. Yeah. But when you are singing, at least to yourself in front of an audience, one of your own songs that comes from your own perspective, your own yeah. life and your own experiences, how is that different inside emotionally mm. than singing a cover of, say, something from Frozen? It's scarier. Why? It's more vulnerable. I mean, there's there's a safety in that, oh, this is somebody else's song, everybody knows it, and I'm just gonna sing it pretty, and and people will like it, yay. There's no responsibility attached to it, but these are your own words, and people, people may not be as familiar with it, and they can choose to like it, or to think, I don't, that, the, I'm young, and so I still sometimes put stock into if like somebody my age thinks that's lame or that's cheesy or something mm -hmm. like that. So, so yeah, there's always that, the risk of rejection that you don't want because performing is so, I mean, it's so reliant on audience approval, you know? <laughs> you want people to like what you do. So yeah, do you, it's scarier. Do you find that you get a better response from the audience when you're doing your own material? Because it truly is coming from yeah, your heart. They, they actually are so great. I think every time it's been, it's, it's, it's the coolest thing. Like Tiny Voice was a song that I wrote a while ago. Uh, it was actually the first song I ever wrote and put out there. And I, would, I just performed it recently at a series of Christmas concerts and you have people come up to you afterward and say, I've been obsessed with that song and, I've, and I just listened to it over and over again and I totally related to it and it helped me, or it helped me through some really hard times, you know? And that's just the most amazing feeling that something you did helped somebody. And so, yeah, there's, there's been, at least from what I've seen, great audience feedback. And then I have to learn to not care if somebody doesn't like it because that's people hard, aren't gonna, it? yeah, people aren't gonna like what you do. And I think sometimes, especially at, I can't at my imagine, age. <laughs> I can't imagine anybody not liking oh, your music. Well, <laughs> you know. I mean, it's so beautiful. It's you know, so if you're lyrical. into Screamo, that's um, more power to you, but you might not like my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> As you continue to grow physically and emotionally, mm -hmm. how, how is it technically physically affecting your voice. Mm. Your voice now at 17 is different yeah. from when it was when you were 
11 and just <laughs> getting started in this business. What are you noticing is the difference? Oh, I just, actually this past week, for the first time in years, I finally listened back to, because if I put something out there, I usually don't listen to it again, you know, unless I'm performing it, but I don't, I don't listen. I listened to my Let It Go cover from when I was 12, I think. Yeah, I think I was 12. And I thought I sounded like a chipmunk. Like, well, it was you so were high smaller pitched. then. Yeah, my voice has gotten deeper. And then, you know, you, it just goes through changes to where you're able to do, do things differently. And then you also, you know, you have to approach things differently because your, like, anatomy is totally changed. So, I mean, it's an adventure. I love it. Mm. Yeah. How much time do you spend practicing each day and vocalizing? Oh. Oh, my teachers are going to get so mad at me for this. <laughs> Be you know, honest. I've, the, people ask me that question when I first started going on the news at 11. Yeah. And I remember just being so bashful and not wanting to admit that I didn't practice. I haven't practiced yet Like, today. Oh, yeah, <laughs> as much as I should. I think I, I sing 24-7. I sing all day, every day. Uh, but in terms of, you know regimented practice scales it, yeah, and arpeggios yeah and... i have a, a series of warm-ups that that i do that yeah scales and arpeggios and things like that that yeah. will get your voice it's like it's like working out you know it's something sure. that just maintains your voice and of course you know when so, you're constantly learning new stuff or writing new stuff you know you're just preparing for the next show so right so just... in terms of and this is for your teacher's benefit <laughs> How much time each oh. day are you spending doing your scales, your arpeggios, and whatever mm. concert numbers you are preparing? Of course, every single day I practice <laughs> for half an hour, half purely an hour. on scales, and then another... What? This well, is I, so hard! <laughs> I, I remember asking you this very yeah, kind of, the same did. kind of a question before when I you were I don't know, warm-ups usually but, take but like... Half an hour. Okay, so warm-ups take really, a half an hour. You, yeah, and especially before, you just want to do that every day and then before shows. And then it's just, it's basically for requirement. If, you know, if, if you're required to learn songs for shows or something like that, then yeah. I'll be learning them and going through them, practicing them but until you, it's perfect. And you said the last time you were here, you said that, yeah, I'm constantly singing in the car. I know, fact, and so it's like, I want to say 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> because you just, it's just, it's just constant, you know? Well, and when it's you, not where you just for one hour every day you you just when sing you're for an good hour. at something like, you really really love you nobody has time. to tell you how long to practice <laughs> right uh, but I mean I, I practice all the time teachers mm -hmm. <laughs> now you you have a, a manager now that's been with you for two years yes. uh, but prior to that your mother was uh, yeah. very involved in your management she was she was and now she gets to just play the role of mom mm -hmm. <laughs> how, how does she keep you grounded oh <laughs> that's such a great question thank you my mom keeps me grounded by first of all just being my mom and not taking any crap and oh yeah, yeah I can, can you say, say that? Yeah, yeah. On TV? <laughs> <laughs> not taking not taking any crap from me, and always being so brutally honest. You know, if if I'm ever doing anything that she disapproves of as a mother, mm -hmm. and so she will never fail to give me her 100% honest opinion, and I love it. So if she thinks I look terrible or I sounded terrible, hey, You're she'll tell get me. It. Oh, yeah. of course I'll get it. And if I'm exhibiting any diva behavior, she told me this all growing up. She's the opposite. She's like the ant, ant what is antithesis? it? Antithesis of a stage mom. Because she would say, if you exhibit any diva behavior, you're out. You're done. No more performing. <laughs> We're going to the car. You go back, yeah, <laughs> go back to you know, regular life. This is a hobby that you get to indulge in if you are a well behaved, nice young lady. Wow. Um, which taught me so much, you know, yeah. taught me to not, I don't not, know, not be a diva. To not develop any weird you know, personality traits. Yeah, so. get those green MMs out of here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, look into your crystal ball for us. All right. And 10, 15 years from now, what do you see yourself doing? Oh. Oh, this is a question like every teenager dreads. It's like, 
What degree are you pursuing? Oh, uh, 10, 15 years? Yeah, where do you see mm. yourself? 27, 30, 35, mm. somewhere in there. I see, I mean, ideally, I see myself as a well-traveled, spirited, free thinker, uh, maybe with a family, um, and of course, someone who has made a lot of new friends and made a lot of music, mm. uh, performing, touring, and continuing to uh, hone my craft as like a songwriter and a, and a musician and a performer and maybe an actress and someone who is able to translate her real life experiences into song and music videos and, and productions. Well, I am certain that you are going to turn out to have an incredible career. You already <laughs> have one, and it's just so fun to see you really soar like an eagle and uh, take off and go. So, Thanks. Lexi Walker, singer, songwriter, actress, YouTube <laughs> sensation. Lover of chocolate. Chocolate. Yep. And art and psychology. <laughs> and dermatology. Thank you so much for being part of Three <laughs> Questions. Thank you for having me.